A warm welcome to today's talk, Saturday the 18th of December. Now it looks like the main features of Omicron infection in the UK so far are most commonly a runny nose, second a headache, thirdly fatigue which can be mild or quite severe, a varying presentation of fatigue, sneezing and a sore throat. They are the symptoms that have been identified so far as the most likely uh, presenting symptoms in those in that order for uh, Omicron infection in the UK. That's in the UK situation. Now, more on this in a minute, but let's go on to some orientation slides first of all, because there's some pretty interesting things unfolding actually at the moment. Uh, new daily confirmed COVID-19 cases. Now, Denmark is remarkably high for new cases. But of course, what we have to remember is Denmark has the best sequencing capacity in the world by far. So it's not surprising that they're picking up more cases. So Denmark, we see, are picking up a lot of new cases. Then United Kingdom, Ireland, United States. Now, is this just the start of the upward deflection that we're seeing in the United States data indicating the start of Omicron? Uh, the answer to that question is uh, probably, from what we know, probably. It looks like the Omicron surge is just about to start in the United States as we speak. Uh, Canada uh, upward trend as well. Japan uh, thankfully still um, bumping along at the zero mark, which is which is great news and also fascinating. Number of uh, COVID nineteen patients in hospital per million. So the United States still high. Denmark, Canada relatively lower. United Kingdom and Ireland comparable. And the fact that the hospitalizations have been going up in Denmark, but nothing like in proportion to the increase in testing, indicating that they're picking up a lot more cases than most other countries are. So that's the hospitalization per million at the moment. And we just I've just heard actually that in the UK, in all of the UK at the moment, there are 65, the latest data is showing, 65, 65 patients in all the hospitals in the UK with Omicron. So very low hospitalizations so far. I know how early it is. So uh, that's the hospitalizations. Uh, now, this is the South Africa data. So that was the original wave back in what August? Um, well, that, what, what's that? That's well, that, that's back way back way back in 2020, isn't it? Sort of summer 2020 or our summer. Uh, this was their um, beta wave, what we called the South Africa variant at the time. This was their uh, delta wave. So succinct, isn't it? Wild type wave, beta wave, uh, delta wave, and now with the Omicron wave, the numbers are clearly. Uh, at a record higher than they have ever been for the numbers. But going on, weekly admissions to hospital, um, they, are, they are going up, clearly going up, but not as quickly as we would have expected. There's a bit of a delay in hospitalisation increase in South Africa, hopefully because the overall number is going to be small. Now, this is the new daily confirmed death. Now, again, we know there's a lag in deaths, but we can clearly see there the wild type wave, the South Africa beta variant wave and the delta wave. And uh, here we see the death rate at the moment. Now, it, it will probably increase somewhat, but we're hoping not very much at all. But that's where we are as of uh, Saturday, the 18th of December, as we've said. Now, here's the ward occupancy that we've been looking at. So there's 8,000 people in hospital in South Africa at the moment. These are 8,000 people in hospital in South Africa who have been positively diagnosed with Omicron who are also in hospital, many of whom are in hospital for other reasons other than Omicron infection. They are incidental findings. In fact, we believe that applies to the majority. So basically 8,000 people. Um, the, these ones are in ICU, 528. Remember, this is a population of 60 million, um, high care and the general ward. And the patients that are requiring oxygen, so basically 8,000 people in hospital diagnosed with uh, Omicron, 202 are currently ventilated. This is bad, but for a whole country, it's very, very, very small. And 1,112 patients requiring oxygen in the South Africa situation at the moment. So very, very low numbers so far. Now, I've got a report directly from the hospital situation in South Africa. So I want to share that now. Um, this is from Claire, who's in South Africa. The medical people I interact with at the hospital are far more optimistic than I've seen them since this all began last April last year. 
good that sounds great nobody wants to tempt fate or speak too loudly just yet but it's what like walking on eggshells at the moment now what claire means here is uh, for, for the scientific professions of medicine nursing pathology radiology all this kind of thing hospital workers are a surprisingly superstitious lot in my experience so if you walk in and you say oh it's a bit quiet today isn't it they'll say oh don't say that word so that, that i think that's what she means that's just that, that just reflects the sort of healthcare culture so we don't want to talk too soon but there's this feeling of quiet optimism in south africa and actually claire is in gautang the, the, the epicenter of the the outbreak uh, but this is now this is Gauteng again uh, there are open beds uh, they're not filling up just yet <laughs> let's hope it stays that way in fact there are two more beds now than last weekend so uh, direct quotes uh, there from um, South Africa and they're well into they're four weeks into this now so this is this is really starting to look encouraging for the South African situation I know there's limits on how much we can extrapolate that to the UK situation to the Canada situation to the Australia situation to the United States situation but it's still um, pretty good news it has to be said now let's counteract that with um, this who's that Dr Fauci someone called Anthony Fauci um, he said uh, when you have a larger number of people getting infected the total amount of hospitalizations is going to be more that's just simple math or as we would say in the UK simple maths so basically uh, this is the caution uh, Dr Fauci is saying that there's going to be one heck of a lot of people infected with this if it's even only a small proportion we could be in for issues in the United States now let's look at the symptoms now Omicron and, uh, and cold-like symptoms rapidly taking over in London. So London is the epicentre in the UK. In fact, I think we'll just look at Tim Spector's data here, uh, the COVID symptom tracker data, just for further uh, orientation on this now. Now, these are, um, th these are people that are doubly vaccinated who've become uh, new cases amongst doubly vaccinated people. These are symptomatic cases. So lots of doubly vaccinated people are symptomatic. This is the total number of cases uh, here, the total number of people symptomatic. So we do see that uh, people who are doubly vaccinated are still getting clinical features uh, quite, quite extensively. Um, nearly always the clinical features are milder, nearly always the shorter lived. They're less likely to result in severe illness, hospitalizations and death, but they still are symptomatic. Um, now, this is incidence by age group. So the particular notable thing here is the younger age group are uh, fairly flat in terms of overall incidence. Of course, this is always about a week out of date. This is up to the 11th of December, I think. So this is always a bit out of date. But what we do see, though, is this rapid increase in 18 to 35 year olds. And this has actually been confirmed by more recent data. Uh, a reduction in the older age group who tend to socialise less, but are also highly vaccinated and uh, the older age group thankfully numbers remaining fairly low uh, this is the incidence in london and as we see even as of the 11th of december cases in london were going up quite uh, dramatically the r value now is probably about gone up from 1.1 to probably about three four some people say even some people say even five um, between three and five at the moment so massive increase between the 11th and now but this is this showed the early part of that trend um so here here again we see the cases in different parts of england so this is wales fairly high here but what we need to notice is this orange line here so we see that this orange line as is going up or was going up pretty steeply and this of course is the london line because that's where omicron's taken hold in england First, um, make no mistakes, other parts of the UK will be following on in the next few days, in the next few days. Um, but that is the situation as of the 11th. So I thought that was uh, quite interesting. Now, the concern, the concern here is long COVID. Now, let me just show you this. Uh, new cases of long COVID every day. It's going to last for more than 12 weeks. So we see nearly one and a half thousand people a day are going to develop long COVID. And we know, we know this from the percentages of people that do develop this. Um, what we don't know is if this is more likely with Omicron, less likely with Omicron, equally likely with Omicron, equally likely with Omicron after vaccination, equally likely or more likely or less likely with Omicron with, with, without vaccination. We don't know any of that. 
So that is a concern. The long COVID situation is a concern and we simply have no idea at the moment. And we probably won't know that for, of course, it takes long COVID, it takes a long time to present, of course, obviously. Um, right, symptoms, uh, data up to the 11th of December, COVID symptom tracker data, Tim Spector, Zoe, King's College London data that we follow closely, we just looked at. In people with at least two doses in the UK, so there's uh, currently, and this was as of up to the week up to the 11th of December, um, 27,000 new daily symptomatic cases in people with at least two doses of vaccine. So already before, Omicron, and this is, this is before Omicron's huge, we're seeing a lot of breakthrough infections. Before Omicron was big, now Omicron is big, we're going to see even more uh, breakthrough infections. That is, well, we know that, we now know that. An increase of 6% from the week before, when it was 25,411. London's currently seeing a rapid rise in positive cases. And remember, this is as early as the 11th of December. So this is the start of the Omicron wave in London. That's been going on now for, what, about uh, about 10 days. Um, driven by Omicron, no question about that. Prevalence in the UK, 1 in 57, the week up to the 11th of December. As we said, predicted long covid um, 1,418 people a day a day will go on to experience symptoms for more than 12 weeks. This is a big dent out of people's lives. It's a big dent out of the economy. It's a big dent out of the uh, out of the workforce. How that's going to be with Omicron, we simply have no idea. If I said anything, it would be a pure 100% guess, so I'm not going to say anything. We simply don't know. Uh, Omicron symptoms. Uh, initial analysis of symptoms data from positive cases in London, so looking where the data is, to compare Delta and Omicron symptoms. London data was selected from a week in October. This is quite clever. So, of course, this week in October was all, essentially all, Delta. That was the Delta week. Now, this most recent week that they have up to the 10th of December, this is going to be largely Delta, uh, but partly Omicron. So, at this time... It would be a guess, but I'd say it was about 20% of cases were Omicron in London at that time. We now know it's uh, much the majority of cases, of course. Um, so the comparing a week that was all Delta with a week that was Delta and Omicron. So that's the comparison. So th that's, that's the uh, Omicron uh, zero week being compared with the Omicron around 20% week. The initial analysis found no clear difference in the early symptoms three days after test between Delta and Omicron. So three days after test, typically someone's going to get symptoms, maybe get tested the day after. So you're probably looking about four days, four or five days uh, symptomatic into the symptomatic period. And um, initial analysis found no clear difference in the early symptoms. Interesting. And it has to be said slightly different from South Africa. Now, let's just look at that because there's, there's probably quite a bit of relevance here. Um, top five Zoe reported uh, symptoms. So, so th this is this is the early London data, right? Most common, runny nose. Second most common, headache. Third most common, fatigue. Sometimes the fatigue was bad. Sometimes it was mild. Fourth most common feature, sneezing. Fifth most common feature, sore throat. The implication is obvious. If you have any of these and uh, you've had colds in the past, you're going to think it's a cold, but it may well not be. It may be an Omicron cold. Need to get tested. Now, slight difference in the presentation in South Africa. We looked at this before. So in South Africa, uh, blocked or runny nose, uh, check, that's the same. Headache, check, that's the same. Tiredness, check, that's the same. Uh, now, London, uh, in the UK, it's described as a sore throat. In South Africa, it's described as a, a scratchy or sore throat. So I think that's the same. The big difference is um, in the UK data, fatigue is a much more prominent feature, although we know there was fatigue in the uh, South Africa data. But the body aches were a prominent feature in South Africa, whereas that doesn't seem to be such a feature in the London data. Now, why is this? Could it be that um, body aches are more likely to break through as a symptom in people that have had previous actual um, SARS coronavirus 2 infection because we know that's where the majority of the immunity comes from in South Africa whereas maybe the vaccine because we know the majority of immunity in the UK comes from vaccination the vaccine provides more protectiveness against body aches that, 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 that could be that could be the case so it could be the difference in the nature of immunity 
But as far as the UK is looking, and I've no reason to suspect this will be any different in the United States or Europe or anywhere else, this is, in most people, presenting as a cold. Mild and self-limiting in the vast majority of cases. So there you go, running nose, headache, fatigue, sneezing, sore throat, think, is this Omicron? It could well be, and test and behave accordingly. Essentially the same as the South Africa data with that bit of difference. Now, I hesitate to give you the official NHS uh, NHS symptoms because it's just becoming you know, a national embarrassment, to be quite honest. It is so out of date. Now, to be fair, I did take this off the website about 25 minutes ago. So it could, they could have updated it. I, I took this off the website just before we came to do this video. So they could have updated it in that time. I mean, they haven't in the last 18 months, but they could have done. NHS official symptoms, a high temperature, a new continuous cough loss change in your sense of smell or taste i mean this is just 18 months out of date what is the nhs playing at here it's just embarrassing now it can present like this but we know from contemporary data and we like to be up to date that that's what we get from the zoe symptom tracker data that's what we've got from the clinicians on the ground in south africa this is what we continue to get from the nhs in the uk so yes, it could present as a high temperature. Yes, it could present as a new continuous cough. Yes, there could be a loss of the change of sense of taste or smell, but normally not. Normally, the vast majority, we believe, are these features here. Why on earth these features have not got through to the NHS website is a mystery to me. One of uh, several mysteries about the official response to this pandemic, it has to be said. Right, getting back to Tim Spector, uh, Omicron is set to be the dominant strain in the UK by Christmas, of course. Uh, and in the new year, cases could hit a peak higher than anything we've seen before. Inevitable. Um, t t Tim is being cautious here. It is inevitable that this will be the case, in my view. Um, hopefully people now recognise the cold-like symptoms, which appear to be the predominant features of Omicron. Absolutely, let's hope they do. Uh, despite the lack of help from the official government website. Ahead of Christmas, if people want to get together and keep vulnerable family, man, family, family members safe. So this is the key thing here, vulnerable family members, um, older people in the family, uh, immunocompromised people in the family. Um, th these are the people we need to think about protecting over the holiday period. Uh, Tim Spector says, I'd recommend limiting social contacts in the run up to Christmas. Uh, he's not saying don't have your Christmas dinner, he just said don't go nuts in the run-up to Christmas. And doing a few lateral flow tests just before big family gatherings, especially if there's vulnerable people uh, present. So that makes perfect sense. Now I have got a report from uh, Imperial College London, but I think we'll leave that for now because I don't want to dilute the impact of that. Because this is the really important thing that we need to uh, get across. Uh, this one is out of date. And uh, we need to have a high index of suspicion for this one. Which, of course, we're going to post in the comments, as we always do, with the references. OK, I think that's all we want to do for now. Um, let's just have a look at let's just have a look at one of Liz's graphics. Let's have a look at one of Liz's graphics here. We, we did these graphics with Liz oh, a long, long time ago. Um, on vitamin D. Are you getting enough vitamin D? We're asking that question. Darker coloured skin people make less vitamin D in exposure to the sunshine, but we don't get any sunshine anyway in the UK at the moment. So uh, something to bear in mind. Thank you for watching and uh, optimise your immune system as best as you can. Thank you.